Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is look at stepwise regression. Now, I previously made two videos, and uh, one was related to backward elimination, and the other one was related to forward selection. In fact, that's the forward selection one just right in front of me now, or the script for it. So what I'm going to do here is, just as a short video, it's to sort of combine the two. Okay, so in forward selection, we started off with this very... I'll, I'll start off with working on the basis of forward selection again, okay? So what we have here is an inbuilt data set called empty cars, okay? And I'm going to fit a linear model that's intercept only, okay? That means that there is no predictor models in the... Uh, predictor variables in the model yet. There's So it's, an it's sort of an empty... Uh, model so to speak and what we're going to do is progressively add variables to it okay uh, if it improves the model so we're going to call that fit start okay so we have this is our response variable miles per gallon and what we're going to do is add a couple of those variables there okay but only if they improve the model now so um we start off again that's just the uh, model there for to start off with fit start it's intercept only okay that one there means intercept only model okay Stop. so that's what that one is that's the significance of that one it's not actually a one in some sort of numeric context it's just a uh, yeah it's an intercept okay so so this is how we would carry out forward selection, okay? And what happens here, it, this is just a bit of a revision. So we start off with a, a, a model where there's no uh, variables or and predictor variables, really, and we just add them consecutively, and we just pick out the best one. Now, I'm going to sort of digress from what I did already and just actually, so, for, sorry, fit start direction equals forward and scope this is an important part for forward selection uh, is the uh, sort of setting a limit on how far uh, how big the model can get okay so fit all is something i've done previously it is a model linear model fitted oops uh, fitted using all the predictor variables okay so it's just something you sort of really have to do okay because if you want to curtail that that's a um if you want to sort of if you for example if you don't want am in under any circumstances you can knock it out there okay so um yeah so we're ready to go so essentially the key thing here is actually we just go from forward to both okay so let's run that there Okay, so what happens here is we start off with a model that has just the intercept. And what happens here is it picks out a uh, variable to be added to the model. So the best uh, variable to add to the model is weight, WT. That's a plus sign, okay? So essentially, if it's in, so what happens now is it goes into the model, okay? And there's all the other sort of, the plus means if we add it in, if we add in, uh, weight or if we add in cylinder or this horsepower or this disp or horsepower this is what happens to the aic so it sort of tells you the, the outcome if you go down this road okay the aic the aic is the icake information criteria and it's a sort of indication it's a sort of model metric of how good a candidate model is or scenario if you add or subtract a model or a variable to a model and essentially the smaller the, the aic value the better Okay, so a smaller is better. So WT, adding WT to this empty model drops the AIC from 115.94 to 73.217. And that's a good thing. Okay, so what happens is we go to the next step. Okay, and you might notice now we have a minus WT down here. Okay, so this is in the model and essentially this is the point now. It can get taken out again. And that's something to think about. And there's a reason why it might get taken out. Okay. Well, it's, it's, it's theoretically possible that we could add in a few more things. And then it, the model might realize, actually, if we take out WT, it would make the model a bit better. And if you're, if you're a bit unsure about why that might be the case, I suggest you look up collinearity or multicollinearity. 
and also the law of parsimony as well. Okay. So what happens here? It adds in cylinder to the model. Okay. So we have WT and cylinder. So cylinder is the best option here. Add in cylinder to model the model. Uh, there's a none option, which means don't do anything. Okay, that's an option. And there, this, there is this remove uh, a variable option, which in this case is WT. Okay, so it ranks them all. Okay. So now we're in the next phase, and it gives us the opportunity, or it, it gives us what the the outcome if we remove either of these two variables. Okay, it gives us the stop option nothing happen don't do anything this is what happens and here's two outcomes here so it tells us the best thing to do now is add in hp horsepower because that drops the um the aic value from 63.2 to 62.667 okay now the next thing so essentially we have three variables in our model miles per gallon plus WT plus cylinder plus horsepower and in this case what happens here is that the best option here is none okay so don't do anything okay and that is stopping condition but what hypothetically might happen in some situations is that at the top of the list might be a, a, a minus option here as in remove some variable that's been added in previously and now uh, the variable selection procedure thinks it's time to take it out and again it might be due to uh, again look up things like multicollinearity okay so um, that finishes it that really so we got our model now in this particular instance I think we get a model that's very similar to um, the forward selection model okay but uh, that we would have gotten previously uh, oh yeah I've got rid of it there so anyway we leave it there yeah that's the main part's done